Before we try to enter the world of concave mirrors, let us first recall what a plane mirror does. A plane mirror, where this is the reflecting part, and this hard thing is its hard protective layer. Light reflects through this reflective part in such a way that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. Suppose we have a person standing in front of a plane mirror. The image formed will appear behind the mirror, perfectly upright, virtual, and equal in size to the real person. A virtual image is one that you can see in the mirror, but you can't touch or catch on a screen. In the case of a plane mirror, the image looks like it's behind the mirror, but no light actually goes there. It's just a clever trick of reflection that makes our eyes think the object exists at that point. In simple words, if the image is formed on the reflective side of the mirror, we call it a real image, and if it is formed on this hard protective layer side, we call it a virtual image. To locate the image in a mirror, we use light rays. They show how light travels and reflects. We usually draw two rays from the top of the object, or the person in this case, and wherever these rays meet or intersect, the image is formed. For example, suppose this is ground. Now, if we draw a ray from the person's head towards the mirror, it will reflect back following this law of reflection. Next, we will draw another such ray like this. Now extend both reflected rays backward like this. They will appear to meet behind the mirror. And that's where the image of the head is formed. Great. Now let us talk about concave mirrors. Just like we have flat mirrors, there are also curved mirrors called spherical mirrors. A spherical mirror is made by cutting a piece from the surface of a sphere. That sphere has a center, which we call the center of curvature, and denote using C and a radius, called the radius of curvature, or R. Now, if we cut a small portion of this spherical surface like this, we get a mirror. If the inner curved surface is shiny, we call it a concave mirror. To imagine a concave mirror, just look at the inner side of a spoon. That curved surface acts almost like a concave mirror. Let us first start with some important terms you should know about a concave mirror. The center of the mirror is called the pole, and we mark it as point P. Now, as already mentioned, the center of the imaginary sphere from which the mirror is cut is called the center of curvature, marked as point C. The straight line, or this line, which passes through P and C, is called the principal axis. The distance between P and C is called the radius of curvature, denoted by R. Finally, exactly halfway between P and C lies the focus of the mirror, marked as point F, and the distance from P to F, or this length, is called the focal length, which is equal to R, divided by 2. All right, now let's learn how to draw ray diagrams to find the image formed by a concave mirror. Don't worry, you don't need to remember too many rules. Just three simple ones are enough to draw any ray diagram. Rule 1. If a ray comes parallel to the principal axis like this, it will always reflect and pass through the focus. Rule number 2. If a ray of light passes through the focus before hitting the mirror, it reflects and goes parallel to the principal axis. So this one is just the reverse of the first rule. Rule number three. If a ray goes through the center of curvature, it reflects back along the same path. And that's it. Super duper easy. There are a total of six different cases based on where the object is placed along the principal axis. In all these cases, we assume that the object is upright and placed above the principal axis, like a burning candle, a vertical arrow with its tip like this, or a person standing straight in front of the mirror. Let's begin with the first case, which is object is placed at infinity. Imagine placing the object very, very far away from the mirror. So far that the light rays coming from it are almost perfectly parallel to each other. So, 
as per rule number one, when these parallel rays reflect from the concave mirror, they all meet at the focus. So in this case, the image is formed at the focus. Since the rays actually meet on the reflective side of the mirror, the image formed is called a real image. And since the image is just a single point, and that point lies on the principal axis at the focus, the image has no height, so it doesn't make sense to call it inverted or erect. And because of zero height, we say the image is highly diminished. Now let's move on to the next case, where the object is a bit closer, somewhere behind the center of curvature like this. To find the image, we draw two rays from the top of the object one that passes through the center of curvature, C. From rule number three, we know that it reflects back along the same path, and another one parallel to the principal axis, which according to rule one, reflects and passes through the focus. Now, these two reflected rays meet at a point between C and F on the reflective side of the mirror. That's where the image is formed. Since the image is on the reflective side of the mirror, Therefore, it will be a real image. The image is also inverted, as it forms below the principal axis, and it is smaller than the object, so we say it is diminished. In the next case, we'll bring the object a little bit closer, exactly at the center of curvature C, and see what happens. From the top of the object, we draw two rays. First, draw a ray parallel to the principal axis. After hitting the mirror, it reflects and passes through the focus F. Second, draw a ray that passes through the focus F. After reflection, this ray goes parallel to the principal axis, which was our rule number two. These two reflected rays meet exactly at point C, where the object is placed. So the image is also formed at C. Comment and tell me the nature of this image. Is it real or virtual? inverted or erect, and bigger, smaller, or the same size as the object. Now let's move on to case 4, where the object moves even closer, that is between C and F. We draw two rays. First, draw a ray parallel to the principal axis. After reflection, it passes through the focus F. Second, draw a ray that goes through the center of curvature C. This ray hits the mirror and reflects back along the same path. These two reflected rays meet at a point beyond C on the reflective side of the mirror. That's where the image is formed. Since the image is on the reflective side of the mirror, therefore it will be a real image. The image is also inverted as it forms below the principal axis. Now because the image is farther away from the mirror than the object, it is larger than the object, and we say the image is enlarged or magnified. Now get ready, because case 5 is where things get really interesting. This time, we place the object exactly at the focus, that is, at point F. As usual, we draw two rays from the top of the object. First, draw a ray parallel to the principal axis. It reflects and passes through the focus F then a ray that goes through the center of curvature, C. It reflects back along the same path. Now, here's the wow moment. After reflection, these two rays become parallel to each other. And you know what that means? Parallel rays never meet each other. So we say the image is formed at infinity, and it is highly enlarged. So large that we can't even draw it to scale. Since the reflected rays are still on the mirror's reflective side, the image is considered real, and because it would have formed below the axis, it's also inverted. Next up is case 6, where something completely different happens. For the first time, the image becomes virtual. Place the object between the pole P and the focus F, that means very close to the mirror. We draw two rays. First, draw a ray parallel to the principal axis. This reflects and goes through the focus F as usual. Second, draw a ray that goes through the center of curvature C. This ray reflects back along the same path. 
You might wonder why I am repeating this again and again. It's so that it sticks in your mind permanently, and you never forget it while drawing ray diagrams. Now comes the interesting part. These two reflected rays do not meet on the reflective side of the mirror. In fact, they move away from each other. But if we extend them backward, they appear to meet behind the mirror. That's where the image forms and therefore the image is virtual. It appears behind the mirror and not on the reflective side. It also appears upright or erect and not inverted and also bigger than the actual object, which means this image is magnified. You know this case is important because a concave mirror, which usually gives real and inverted images, now creates a virtual, erect, and magnified image. That's why it's used in shaving mirrors or makeup mirrors, in order to make your face look bigger and clearer when you position it near the mirror. Before we move further, Tell me in the comments whether or not we can place the object on the right side. Let's now talk about a bonus tip that makes working with concave mirrors even more powerful, which are mirror equation and magnification. These are simple formulas that help you calculate the position and size of the image without needing to draw the full ray diagram every time. First, the mirror formula goes like this. 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v plus 1 upon u. Here, f is the focal length, u is the object distance from pole p, and v is the image distance from pole p. Sign convention is simple. It's like drawing a coordinate axis like this with the origin at pole p. Anything measured to the left side of p is taken as negative. Then anything measured to the right side of p is taken as positive. Then the heights measured upward from the principal axis are considered positive and heights downward from the axis are considered negative. Consider an example. Suppose the object is placed 15 centimeters in front of the mirror. So the object distance u is minus 15 centimeters because it is measured to the left of p. The focal length f is given as minus 10 centimeters since the focus is also on the left side of p. Find the nature, size, and the position of the image that will be formed. It's super simple. Using the mirror formula, we substitute the values. 1 upon minus 10 equals 1 upon v plus 1 upon minus 15. To isolate 1 upon v, we move 1 upon minus 15 to the left side, giving 1 upon minus 10 minus 1 upon minus 15 equals 1 upon v. This gives minus 1 upon 30. Therefore, V equals minus 30 centimeters. Since V is negative, the image is formed on the same side as the object, meaning it is a real image located 30 centimeters in front of the mirror. Next comes the magnification formula. It is written like this. M is equal to height of image divided by height of object, which is also equal to minus V divided by U. This formula tells us how big or small the image is compared to the object. If M is positive, the image is virtual and erect. If M is negative, the image is real and inverted. Also, if the absolute value of M is greater than 1, the image is enlarged, and if it is less than 1, the image is diminished. Let's continue the previous example. We found that V is minus 30 centimeters and u is minus 15 centimeters. Using the magnification formula, m equals minus v divided by u, which means minus of minus 30 divided by minus 15, giving minus 2. Since m is minus 2, it means the image is real and inverted because the magnification is negative. And since its absolute value is 2, which means the value we get after ignoring the minus sign, the image is two times larger than the object. That is, the image is enlarged. This example is similar to case four, where the object is placed between the center of curvature and the focus, and the image forms beyond the center, real, inverted, and enlarged. 
exactly like what we got here. Your turn. An object is placed five centimeters in front of a concave mirror, and the distance between the center C and pole P, which means the radius of curvature for this concave mirror, is 20 centimeters. Use the mirror formula to find the image position V. Then use the magnification formula to find M. Also, tell me in the comments, where is the image formed? Is it real or virtual? Is it enlarged or diminished? Is it erect or inverted? Let's see who gets it right. If this video gets 15,000 likes, then I will make the next video on convex mirrors discussing how they form images, real-life uses, and why it is said in the car mirror that objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. So good.